All right, y'all, guess what I got? I got myself an iron ring. Okay, so let me take you through a little bit of what it looked like, like how did I register for it, all of that jazz, and then we can get into the oath because that's, whew, the oath was, it was interesting. Let's just put it that way. So a few months back, all engineering students who were graduating got an email saying, you know, hey, if you're graduating and, you know, we would like to practice as an engineer, meaning basically, I don't even know if you need the iron ring to apply to be a professional engineer. But anywho, if you want your iron ring, here's where you register. This is the link for a PEGA or CAP 18 or whoever organizes this because it's not the university that organizes this. It's actually a professional organization that tracks these iron rings and graduating engineers. Anyways, okay, go to this link, type in a bunch of information. I'm given the time and location of the iron ring ceremony for my university paid $30 for the ring and by the way they asked for your ring size which I got sized at the engineering student center so just some a little bit of logistics there because I had to go and size it before I signed up anyways that was very quick that was very nice and then heard nothing from them until a few days before the ceremony where the org was like, hey, we haven't given them any information. Maybe we should tell them a little bit more, you know, especially for type A people like myself. Okay, anywho, okay, so we get this email a few days before the actual ceremony. It tells us what time to get there by, so what time the to be obligated engineers is what we're called should get there by uh, what time your guests should get there by and what time the doors close all of that kind of stuff they don't tell us anything about what to expect so that's that's literally all the information we get like hey be there at that time and i'm like great you're really really playing into this cult secret society rumor you really are you really really are because at this point myself and other engineers started to joke about the rumor of you know people in hooded jackets and chains and so on and so forth so was it actually that culty was it actually that culty spoiler alert <laughs> there were chains there were chains okay so the day of i get there i get my parents sorted out because they were going to quickly go do something and then come so i walk in and i'm kind of like okay what on earth am i supposed to do because i have been given no instructions there are a bunch of students and guests and so on and so forth here where do i go what do i do someone please tell me bless this lady who was at the front helping people out she basically told me okay go get pick up your ring from one of these lines they had a bunch of lines of students lined up um, according to their last name go pick up your ring uh, get a few instructions and then when your dad comes in go register with him because my dad who is a professional engineer was going to be putting the ring on me so you basically register with your guest presenter is what they're called so I first picked up my ring uh, from a very uh, sweet man who <laughs> this is when I started laughing I, I was a little bit sarcastic here just because I thought I thought it was very very funny how he asked me for my ID and I literally said to him because someone's gonna want to impersonate me and get my iron ring right it was just hilarious how serious it's taken because and I'm not saying like the idea behind is very serious I just I just found the ID checking to be hilarious anywho picked up my ring they ask you to try it on right away to make sure that it fits if it doesn't after the ceremony you can get it exchanged for a different size mind fit and then you're actually asked to immediately take it off because that's what you're told that you're not supposed to wear it right after uh you're not supposed to wear it until the ceremony is done and over with anywho get the ring and with the ring all students get this little card with the oath they're going to take okay so we get this card I read it and I'm like, hmm, that is a little bit of a funny English, if you will. Uh, so, you know, my friends and I, we kind of talk about it a little bit, wait around, 
my parents finally come in, I get the guest presenter stuff sorted out. So what that looked like was not as serious as, as they made it out to be. Literally, you go up to someone, go like, hey, this is my guest presenter, what do we do? They give you a piece of paper that literally says, okay, when the warden comes to you, which is one of the people running the event, when they come to you to put on your ring, basically your guest presenter, so aka my dad, will put the ring on me instead. And then they say a bunch of words like, may it be fortunate to you, or something along the lines of that. Okay, and capiche, that's literally it. There, there's no sign up, nothing. So it was not as serious as I thought it was gonna be, the registration. Uh, and then we were on our merry way into the actual hall where the ceremony was going to take place. The cult secret society ceremony was going to take place. I love playing into this rumor. It's just so much fun. Okay, all right. So that was up until actually getting into the hall and the ceremony beginning. Here is where the fun starts, okay? So if there's one thing you learn, one thing you learn from this video and you're going to be, you know, participating in this ceremony as a to be obligated engineer, the fancy Opega warning kills me. Anyways, so if you're one of those people who are going to be graduating as an engineer, participating in the ceremony, do not do what I did unless, unless you are a heels expert who wears heels every single day because I wore heels and at that I wore block heels. They were still pretty high. I wore block heels and that was not a good idea because you are standing for the entire ceremony. Let me repeat that. You are standing for the entire ceremony. It is not fun. I contemplated taking off my shoes many, many, many times and then eventually I did. In the middle of the ceremony, everybody watching me took off my shoes because I could not keep those things on, okay? You're standing still, it's completely different than walking periodically in heels. So that was not great. Pro tip, do not wear heels or do not wear high heels. Or wear very, very, very comfortable heels because you are standing the entire time. Okay, leading with that, the way it goes is you come in, there's, the way we had it set up is your guests sit on the sides of the room and there are a bunch of iron chains that are laid down and students line up beside those chains in any order it's random and then your guest presenter if you have one is lined up beside you wait around a little and that's when the ceremony starts okay so the beginning of the ceremony was okay like it was not culty at all and i was like hey this is pretty normal i understand what they're saying it's plain english all as well but then then we got into the oath stuff okay let me give you a sneak peek of what the oath sounds like all right i'll explain what this piece of paper is later but some parts of the oath go like i your name in the presence of these my betters and my equals in my calling bind myself upon my honor and cold iron that to the best of my knowledge and power i will henceforward suffer or pass i will not henceforward suffer or pass uh, or be privy to the passing of bad workmanship or quality material in aught that concerns my works before mankind blah 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 my favorite wages for that work i will openly take my reputation and my calling i will honorably guard I will early and warily strive my uttermost against uh, for my assured failures and derelictions. I ask pardon beforehand of my betters, uh, praying that in the hour of my temptations, weakness, and weariness, the memory of this my obligation, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so right now it actually doesn't sound that bad, but when they did it in the ceremony, it sounded like a foreign language in the actual ceremony it sounded very circly and let me explain what that means so it just it felt like you were trying to say something that you could do in five words in 500 words and in very complicated and old english that's how it came off and i did see actually a few people laughing and i while i you know, I understand how that goes against the seriousness of engineering, which if you actually take into account what engineers do, engineering is actually a very huge responsibility. But I could understand why they were laughing because 
when you talk to engineers that way, they cannot take you seriously. And more importantly, they cannot trust you. And this is something I've learned along the way is you have to speak at the level of people that you're talking to. Engineers are very logical and practical and direct. You need to speak clearly and simply and straightforward in order to help them understand the seriousness of this oath that you're trying to, to help them understand the seriousness of. Because what I think, like a PEGA or CAP18, whoever they are, whoever runs this or, uh, event, uh, what they're trying to do with all this fancy language is try to impart a seriousness uh, of the ritual. That's li it's, really it's literally called Ritual of the Calling of an Engineer. But because of this complicated wording and indirect wording, people cannot take it seriously. That is just my opinion on the oath, and I can understand why the ritual itself has become this running joke in uh, with engineers. Rather than a ceremony filled with pride and honor, I can understand that the wording is outdated and it needs to be updated to reflect um, the current uh, nature of the engineering population. With that said though, after that, um, and, as the oath was being taken, so the warden at the at the front of the sir of the hall would say a few words. All the engineers, to be obligated engineers, uh, lined up would repeat after him. And then once the oath was done, the wardens came down from the stage and put rings on all of the um, students lined up. So when the warden came over, obviously my dad put my ring on me instead. Said the the words that he was supposed to say. Students dispersed, took pictures, started talking, and then the ceremony was reconvened. Another warden uh, versus the warden who took students through the oath. Another warden went over the artifacts that were used during the ceremony and their importance for engineering. So, you know, what, the hammer they were using was from some sort of iron for a bridge or something like that. So they went over the importance of those artifacts and then the ceremony was done. That, that was the iron ring ceremony after that students were asked to go back outside line up again according to their last name to register meaning you have to say that yes you were there yes you got your ring aka yes you went through the ceremony and took the oath and then once you sign that paper that hey i took the oath you get this piece of paper which i'm going to cover up my signature but basically you get this paper that has the oath on it and it's basically a certificate which says the ritual of the calling of an engineer and it shows that you took the obligation. So that is the iron ring ceremony. Now that was me just vomiting the entire ceremony. I went through it very, very fast so I could be very very concise and you could get a good idea of exactly what the timeline looks like and how the ceremony takes place, what does it look like. Uh, what are kind of the logistics around it? I myself personally didn't think of it as cult-like as it came off as, as the rumors were. It was definitely not cult-like, but it was something that I, I personally believe can be improved, especially now having understood the background, uh, the, the historical nature of where this oath comes from and who it's associated with. So the oath itself is associated with someone by the name of Rudyard Kipling, something along the lines of that, and he has uh, racist and colonial, uh, pro-colonial uh, ties, if you will, and there's a lot of um, a lot of history associated with this oath that's not necessarily positive. So that does make me feel a bit conflicted, but at the end of the day, I am proud to have gotten this iron ring, and it is adorable. I will be wearing this not regularly in my opinion i am not a jewelry person but i will wear it because it is an honor to be given this responsibility of doing important work and big work that puts a lot of people at risk i don't think people understand because of how popular engineering has become how important the work is actually you're writing software for airplanes right you do one thing wrong and you have hundreds of people on an airplane stuck in a location potentially at risk right that potentially having uh, putting their life at risk you could have people um in oil and gas in mines 
and you could be building technology for them, maybe mining technology, and you build that wrong, and the mine could just collapse in on them, right? So it's, it's very important to understand the responsibility that you're taking on, especially if you've entered the career just from a, hey, I'm gonna make good money perspective, because it is a big responsibility and it should be taken seriously. I just wish it was done in a way that that seriousness and that responsibility came, um, was, was more obvious to uh, the engineers being obligated. Anyways, that was the iron ring ceremony. I had a good time. I am very, very happy to be graduating and I do feel honored to have gotten this iron ring. With that said, thank you for watching and if you will be eventually getting your iron ring, congratulations for being on this journey. And with that, until next time.